do you think you're going? Where's Dr. Carruthers? Dr. Carruthers? Oh, you gentlemen who've gotten into the wrong flat you have. This here flat belongs to Mr. Spaulding. Where is he? I wouldn't be knowing that, sir. He's gone for good, he has. He left kind of sudden-like. And if you gentlemen would be kind enough to leave the same way, I'll get on with me work. See here now. Keep your hands out of there. What do you think you're doing? Don't you dare touch those papers. Who do you think you are? I've never... Oh. Anne Spaulding, St. Helens Academy, Geneva, Switzerland. Greenwich time, it is now 5.53. As long as we're buying watches this trip, remind me to buy one for myself. One that's guaranteed to run. You mean one that's guaranteed to run in the shower, don't you, honey? Well, let's not exaggerate. That only happens once a year. Why, Mr. Baker, really, you should bathe more often than that. Now, what was I saying before someone so nicely changed the subject? This. Look, there's someone I think we know. The, the man smoking the bulldog pipe. You sure have a good memory for bulldog pipes, honey. That's Pete Johnson. Pete Johnson? The embassy last month. I was trying to export that load of Japanese crickets, remember? Oh, sure. He, he was with the State Department or the FBI or something, wasn't he? I remember he got such a big boot out of your trying to convince the English those crickets were tin. Matter of fact, I got a sample left. Oh. Yes, of course, the old cricket man himself. How are you, Biff? Good to see you, Pete. <laughs> You remember the missus? I most certainly do, the loveliest American girl on the continent. Well, now I know you're with the State Department, Mr. Johnson. Such a diplomat. <laughs> you waiting for somebody or you going someplace? Paris and Geneva. Got a little business in Switzerland. Geneva? What, you too? That's right. Well, what are you buying this time for the unsuspecting American public? Swiss yodelers? Swiss watches. Yodelers next time. And thanks for the suggestion. I do hope you'll join us on the plane, Mr. Johnson, that I won't have to stay awake and listen to Biff snore. Well, the fact is, I'm uh, traveling with someone. Well, the more the merrier. Then I'll be sure Biff will stay awake. <laughs> Mr. Spaulding, I'd like you to meet two friends of mine, Mr. and Mrs. Biff Baker. Mr. Spaulding. Pleasure, sir. How do you do? You're an American, aren't you? I am, and gratefully so. May I have your attention, please? BEA announces the departure of their service BE 351 to Paris. Will passengers please extinguish their pipes and cigarettes and proceed through gate five to the aircraft? The EA service to Paris. Thank you. He's leaving London now. No, I couldn't get a ticket. The flight was full. I'm taking the morning plane arriving tomorrow afternoon. Now listen carefully. He's going to Geneva. There's a school there, St. Galant's Academy. He's going to meet the student, a girl. The name is Anne. Spaulding. Oh, she's lovely. How old is your daughter, Mr. Spaulding? Sixteen. Yes, I think she's pretty nice, too. Were you as lovely as that at sixteen, sweetheart? Now, Biff Baker, let's not go dragging any skeletons out of the family closet. Besides, I happen to have a picture of you with three that we can talk about. Oh, well, I surrender. <laughs> How about another round? I'll see if I can scare up the stewardess. Oh, I'd like a sandwich, if you don't mind. Okay, what kind? Uh, cream cheese and watercress with lots of mayonnaise on the side. Oh. Well, honey, you can't expect a man to order a sandwich like that. No. What about you and your raisin brownies with the whipped cream on the side? Stool pigeon. <laughs> I take it you're in politics, sir. Not directly. However, we're all involved in politics these days, whether we like it or not. I see what you mean. And you're right, too. Now, you take my line of work and... Now, honey, I'm sure that Mr. Spaulding doesn't want to sit and listen to you talk shop. Well, that's quite all right, my dear. I sometimes feel an uncontrollable urge to talk shop myself. Well, I'm sure your type of work must be fascinating. I'd love to hear about it. Oh, I'm afraid you'd be bored. Well, go ahead. Try me. 
Oh, we were just about to talk shop, Mr. Johnson. You're on next. Can I talk to you a minute? Would you excuse us, please? Certainly. Sure. Certainly. Just came in on the radio, sir. Mrs. Fenwick. This is horrible. You and your shop talk, I guess. Scared them off. Something about Mr. Spalding that puzzles me. What? Oh, I don't know. Kind of seems to be in a world all of his own. Go on. He strikes me as being the big, strong, silent type. They never say anything anyway. <laughs> you know, Biff, that's what I like about being married to you. Your lack of imagination makes me feel so comfortable and secure. <laughs> <laughs> but why? I'm afraid it's fairly obvious, sir. They were looking for you. What? What can I do? Nothing, sir. I'm taking you off the plane at Paris. It's possible that whoever killed Mrs. Fenwick knows you're going to Geneva. I can't take that chance, sir. But what about my daughter? I'll take care of that. Right now, you're my problem. She'll be worried. Someone's got to meet her. Uh, will you go on? No, sir. My orders are to stay with you. I'll phone Geneva and have someone meet her. And scare Anne half to death? No. Wait a minute. What about the Bakers? They're going to Geneva. The Bakers? If they're trustworthy. Well, if they're not, I don't know who is. Let's ask them. Yes, Madame Desire. That's very nice of you. Oh, yes, I'll leave right away as soon as the car arrives. And bonjour to you, too, Madame. Ready for your pickup? Yeah. Monsieur Spaulding has arranged everything by the telephone. Miss Spaulding awaits Monsieur Baker's pleasure. Just how old is this Madame Dussard? If you're jealous, put on your shoes and come along. Mm -mm, not me. I need my beauty sleep. You do want your wife to look her most glamorous tonight, don't you? It only gives you a couple of hours. Think it's enough? What, you brute! <laughs> <laughs> Get that, will you, honey? Probably the car. Okay. Hello? Oh, yes, this is Baker. Fine, thank you. The car, honey. Good. Where'd I put my hat? Oh, it's in the suitcase. In the suitcase? Mm -hmm. This is a hat. Oh, honey, you're just not the Anthony Eden type. In this hat, Anthony wouldn't be either. <laughs> so long, honey. Uh, See you later. Okay. It just so happens I'm going... Is this the right road to St. Galan? Oui, monsieur. You going that way? Hop in. Oh. <laughs> My name is Baker, Biff Baker. How do you do, monsieur? I am Pierre Fourier. You are an American, aren't you? That's right. Now, I'll tell you something. 
I'll bet you're going to see your sweetheart. Why, yes, monsieur. I... Yes, I'm going to see my girl. Don't seem very happy about it. I am going to say goodbye. She is leaving the academy today. Singular? It's the middle of the term. How come? Her papa is coming to take her back to America. Oh. By any chance, your girlfriend doesn't happen to be Anne Spaulding. You are the papa of Mademoiselle? No, I'm just a friend, Theo. Oh, I see. How good a friend, monsieur. I'm a happily married man. Relax. And of course, you must always act as one would expect a young lady of saint Galon, n'est-ce pas? Oui, madame. I'll remember everything. I will. Yes, madame. <laughs> we are strict here, monsieur. Very strict. Oh, I'm sure of that. But we are not always so strict, monsieur. There are moments when we are not required to be so formal. And then you will find that we can be most amusing and gay. Oh, yes. Très gay. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Anne. I hope you have a nice trip home. Thank you, Theo. Thank you very much. This is beautiful. Anne seems to have found an admirer in Switzerland. He's a boy from the village. He has come once or twice to the dancers. Chaperone, to be sure. But this romance... Uh, I will insist that he leave immediately. Oh, give him a chance, Madame Dussard. After all, I'm all in favor of romance. Makes the world go round, you know. Does it, monsieur? <laughs> well, yes, of course. Ah, yes. Sometimes one forgets romance. Not that one does not enjoy it. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> one sometimes forgets. Yes, one does forget. Monsieur, it is difficult to talk here. But occasionally I go to Geneva in the evening. Perhaps we could talk, no? Well, that'd be very nice, yes. But uh, we don't expect to be in Geneva very long. Did you say we, oui, monsieur? We, oui, madame. Uh, I mean we. Us. Mrs. Baker and I. Oh. Mrs. Baker. I see. And we must not keep Monsieur Baker waiting. You will never forget. Never, Theo. Never. I'll put the luggage in the car. Goodbye, Madame. You've been very nice. I'm going to miss you. This is all your luggage? Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Baker. Theo's father has a truck on his farm. I will bring the luggage to the hotel. That's very considerate of you, Theo. Don't be late now. Never fear, Mr. Baker. down on the plane together from London. Well, why didn't he come? He isn't sick, is he? No, no. Some important business matter came up. 
You know how it is. That's why I had to get off the plane at Ferris. Did he seem worried or anything? Well, I didn't notice particularly. Your father isn't much of a talker. Gives the impression he's got a lot on his mind. Oh, yes, I know. Gina says you're like that. Somebody's in a hurry. <laughs> The big idea, you're trying to kill somebody? Gotcha. Now, wait. Baker's room? Yes. I have the luggage of Miss Spalding. There is more in the truck. Oh, we'll just bring it right on in. Monsieur and Mademoiselle are not here. No, they haven't arrived yet. Oh, that is strange. Why do you say strange? They left saint -Gilain long before I did. Just who are you? My name is Theodore Fourier. I'm a friend of Mademoiselle. Oh. Well, you don't suppose they could have had a, a breakdown or an accident, do you? Oh, but no, then I would have passed them on the road. I see. Uh, Madame, you will pardon the suggestion, but your husband, is he to be trusted with a pretty girl? <laughs> yes, I'm sure Biff can be trusted. Of course. <laughs> then there is only one thing to do. I will go back and try to find them. Wait a minute. I'll go with you. Better for everyone if you will admit your identity, Doctor. I'm not a doctor. I've told you a dozen times my name is Baker. This pretense is so ridiculous. Is this man your father? Don't say anything, Ann. Shut up! Let him alone! He isn't my father. You're lying. My father is Dr. Carruthers, a scientist, Mr. Baker. Carruthers? Now I'm beginning to get it. You don't know it yet, but you boys have made a great big mistake. We do not make mistakes. That's very clever, mademoiselle. But it does not work. We do not give up so easily. There are ways of making a father talk. Such a pretty little face. It will be a pity to see it spoiled. Wait! Oh, you're changing your mind, eh? All right, I'm Carruthers. That's better. Sit down. Sit down. You'll be meeting soon with a technical expert. You will have a great deal to tell him. It will be best for you to be in a cooperative state of mind, sir. Something out there. Wait. Madame, this is the very same bouquet I gave Mademoiselle Anne. They must have gone up the side of the road. She must be in trouble. She would never have thrown this away, never. It could only have been taken from her by force. by me on the road to saint -Galin. Hold on, madame, we are off. Stupid fool. This isn't brother. Well, that's impossible. You already admitted it. He picked up the girl. Oh, you got on the plane with Dr. Brothers in London. Where is he? 
don't know any Dr. Carruthers. A man named Spaulding got off the plane in Paris. Where's your father? I don't know. Leave the girl alone. She doesn't know a thing. Stop it! Oh. I want him to talk. Get up. Here. Not a chance. I'm going with you. On my father's farm, there are many rats. I am a good shot. You must let me go alone. We're wasting time. Admit it. You're an American agent, aren't you? Sent here to pick up Dr. Grother's daughter. What difference does it make what I tell you? You don't believe anything I tell you anyway. That's enough. When a girl doesn't show up, the doctor will come looking for her. But when he does, we'll make a trade. The girl for the information we want. And how will Carlotas contact you? Through him. The garage will tell us where you stay, Mr. Baker. Watch the girl, Rosa. We want her alive. Him, it makes no difference. Come with me. Stop where you are. My last shot. Stop where you are. Biff, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right, sweet. Take care of him, Tio. I'll go in and get the other man. I'll get him, monsieur. What about Anne? She's all right. One moment, mademoiselle. I have some business to complete. All right, Buster, in the car. Take you to a hospital. Quickly, I'm dying. You're not dying, but you're going to a hospital. I want you alive and kicking when they put you away. All right, get him. Wouldn't you like to read this, darling? We'll be in Paris in a few minutes. No, thank you, Daddy. You, uh, you miss him already. Pretty bad, huh? Tim? Well, of course not, Daddy. It's just that, well, I'm, I'm grateful for what he did for us. He was quite brave, wasn't he? He certainly was. Don't you think so, Mrs. Baker? Biff? Oh, fine boy. I bet he misses you, too, Ed. Such a shame that we couldn't have brought him with us. Coffee, mademoiselle? No, please. Are you sure, mademoiselle? You see, I am on a vacation and I... Tito! 